Time now for the press review, and for that I'm joined in the studio by Erin Agonke. Hello, Erin. Hi, Matt. How are the French papers been covering uh, Emmanuel Macron's victory? Well, Annette, the French press is more or less unanimous today. It's saying that it's a solid victory for Emmanuel Macron, but a lot less resounding than in 2017, both in terms of numbers and general sentiment. Uh, so Macron won with a smaller gap than in 2017. Another major takeaway is, of course, abs abstention. Uh, historic at 28.2 percent of eligible voters did not go up go to the polls on Sunday. Now, that's the highest for a second round of a presidential election since the year 1969. Le Parisien sums up Emmanuel Macron's response to that on its covered page, which reads, Emmanuel Macron promises five better years. He's vowing to focus on social and climate issues and, of course, on those who didn't vote at all or who voted for his rival, Marine Le Pen. Uh, now, Le Monde, though, Annette writes that similar to during the Yellow Vest crisis, uh, Emmanuel Macron had promised to pursue a new method of government of governance based on listening and this kind of permanent permanent grand debate. Uh, the paper, though, wonders how long this will last, uh, suggesting that instead of pursuing the revolutions that he had set out to pursue at the beginning of his first mandate, he's essentially gradually turned to and settled for continuity. Uh, and finally, Annette, just a few words from Liberation, because I think that paper really sums up much of what the French press is saying uh, this t today. They called Macron's win a victory without glory, essentially saying that he faces the task of healing unprecedented divisions and general skepticism about his ability to learn from the errors of the past. Now, it seems his far-right uh, rival Marine Le Pen certainly did better than she performed in 2017, but her party is still disappointed, apparently, yeah. Aaron. Yeah, that's right, Annette. And Le Figaro sums up her loss as the lost illusions of de-demonization. That's because they say that her efforts to soften her image essentially went were inefficient. They say that not a day went by without someone from politicians across the political spectrum to judges to actors to artists to athletes making public calls against voting for Marine Le Pen. Pen, the general consensus being, of course, that she still is very much uh, a far-right candidate. Now, independent outlet Mediapart sees things slightly differently, says that Sunday's defeat has, quote, the taste of victory for the far-right, and that's because there's this paradox. Yes, she lost, but also uh, she got the far-right's highest ever score. And that's partly to uh, what happened in the overseas territories, where she did pretty well, didn't she? Yeah, and at really staggering numbers, she got nearly 70% of the vote in Guadeloupe and nearly 61% of the vote in Martinique. Now, that's unprecedented, and things have changed quite a bit since the year 1987, as the HuffPost points out, when her father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, was even prevented from landing in, in Martinique uh, because thousands flooded the runway in protest. Uh, now, the website says that she's painted herself as the representative of the forgotten France, not only kind of the countrysides, uh, but also, of course, the overseas territory. Territories. Uh, and the website also cites the Macron government's handling of the pandemic there, especially the vaccine requirement for, for nurses, uh, as major reasons for the shift. Again, those requirements sparked widespread strikes and protests on and the island. And how was the coverage in international papers? Well, a lot of papers abroad are definitely hailing Macron's victory as a relief, albeit with some constructive criticism, it must be said. Uh, Italian paper Corriere della Sera says that France chose Europe, Atlanticism, and liberalism with Emmanuel Macron, uh, but says that uh, it's still more divided than ever, uh, especially between the France of above, which the paper says is the upper class, highly educated city dwellers, uh, and the France of below, the lower middle classes who voted mostly for Marine Le Pen. The Italian paper really saying that those voters should not be demonized or stigmatized and must be listened to. Uh, Politico, Annette, says that before the European Union establishment breathes a sigh of relief and carries on with business as usual, it's worth talking about how France can avoid playing Russian roulette with Europe's future every five years. Uh, the journalist argues that it's time to fix French politics. He says they're ravaged, ravaged by an all-too-powerful presidency, so he proposes a few options uh, to give them a real political choice. Uh, that's creating a citizens' assembly to deliberate on um, societal or constitutional issues, or holding parliamentary elections before presidential ones in order to encourage a more diverse pool of representation. Uh, and finally, uh, Annette, Macron's victory has also been applauded for the effect that it'll have on the international stage. Uh, the New York Times saying that it's a relief to allies in Europe and in Washington, reminding readers, of course, that Marine Le Pen uh, is not only hostile to the EU and to NATO, but she's also a, quote, longtime sympathizer uh, with Vladimir Putin. The paper saying that she would have certainly pursued policies that would have weakened the united front to save uh, Ukraine from Russian aggression. And speaking of Russia, how did uh, Russian papers react to his victory? 
Well, I found uh, one article from the Russian paper Commerçant. The journalist who wrote the piece says that about six months ago, everyone was talking about the possibility of Russians interfering in the French elections. He says that that seemed unlikely to him, though ultimately, uh, Russia's interference ended up being quite obvious, though different than what than what many had expected. He says that Russia's, of course, he calls it special military operation, uh, turned candidates who once expressed support for Russia uh, and its president, being Eric Zemmour, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Valérie Pécresse, and, of course, Marine Le Pen. It turned them into a essentially lackeys of the Kremlin, which ultimately helped them, uh, uh, helped Macron uh, beat all of them. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that he says that Macron was able to blame an emerging agricultural and energy crisis, not on his own policies, but on the actions of Vladimir Putin, his war in Ukraine. Uh, and he also says that he got lucky with his rival being Marine Le Pen, thanks to whom he ended up being re-elected again, as expected. Thank you, Erin. That's Erin Nagonki with uh, the Press Review. And if you want to take a look at the stories we've been talking about, you can, of course, head to our website. That's France24.com.